Hi, I'm Patricia Greenberg. Well, February is National Heart Health Awareness Month. And with Valentine's Day coming up, I wanted to talk about all things love related because love and the heart go hand in hand, heart health and being in love go hand in hand. Valentine's Day is always associated with love, romance and reconnecting with our partners. Just the two of you, no work, no kids, no outside distractions, whatever that means to you, go for it. Now, I know it's never too late to find love and romance, and sex is good for you in so many ways. It helps us connect to one another. It calms the body and the mind. And having an intimate relationship helps us see the world through happier eyes. I invited my friend, Amy Riley. She's a culinary expert and author of Fork Me, Spoon Me, and the sensual cookbook, Eat Cake Naked. I want to hear all about that later, too. Welcome, Amy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. (laughs) This is wonderful. I just, you know, we need some fun and happiness in our lives today, right? There's so much going on. Yes. Um, yes. One of the age old mis- misconceptions about sexual health and sensual pleasure is that it ends after 50, right? I mean, that's the biggest misconception, <laughs> but we know nothing can be further from the truth. And I'm so happy to have you here to talk all about food and lifestyle that can enhance your sex mm-hmm. life at any age. So first of all, I want to ask what got you into this specialty in the first place? Oh my goodness. So I was working as a food and wine writer. Um, and I suddenly got, well, not suddenly I, I got really sick. It, it, it was ongoing over a few months. And finally we figured out that the problem, and this is so not sexy. It was a systemic yeast infection okay. combined with, um, a mold allergy. And it basically meant my digestive system was destroyed. Well, the, the cure was a drastic diet change and not, you know, temporarily. Mm -hmm. Um, and the diet was awful. It was so awful, but I started feeling better almost immediately. And I was so, I was just, I was sold. I was like, if changing your diet can, can do things like this for you, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to talk about as a writer. Um, and it just so happened that I'd been doing at that time, a lot of research on aphrodisiac foods. Oh, okay. And so I went, wow, this is, there's a huge overlap here. And here's my opportunity. This is my place. I'm going to talk to people about how changing your diet can improve your whole sex life, right? which is, you know, it's a really great reason to change your diet. Right. <laughs> so, um, and that's, you know, I, that's, that's, I started there. I went and I got my, um, master's in gastronomy from Le Cordon Bleu. During that time, I just kept studying more about not only just aphrodisiacs, but also, um, the relationship between food and sex, like the psychology of it and the presentation of it in pop culture and all of these things, as well as continuing to learn more about the, you know, as more studies came along, how food, food choice was affecting, um, your sex life from every angle. You know, heart health and sexual health go hand in hand. We're hearing more and more about that. Um, You know, with my background, like you, I've studied it extensively. Um, I talk to doctors, cardiologists in particular, and this keeps coming up again, that people who are having, men who are having erectile dysfunction Mm -hmm. and blaming it on age, it might absolutely be, you know, their stress levels, what they're eating, what they're not eating, uh, and so forth. So You know, can you tell us a little bit more about what we're learning about how a healthy heart leads to a healthy sex life? You know, absolutely. I mean, it's all both are about blood flow, right? Yes. So heart health is obviously about good circulation, good blood flow. Well, you can't enjoy sex. And in fact, for men, you often you literally can't perform if you don't have good blood flow. And so if you're not taking care of your heart, you are very likely to have some sort of problem with sexual performance or even with sexual desire. So, and that goes for men and women, of course. Oh, absolutely. We always talk about men, but. Yes, yeah, know. yeah. Amy, I, your work seems whimsical, at, you know, at first glance, but, you know, every aspect of our lives affects affects everything, but it also it really plays a huge role in our overall well-being. Talk mm-hmm. to us a little bit about, you know, I love it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Susie Homemaker from way back. <laughs> Talk to us about, you know, the food and the way you set the table mm-hmm. and the presentation, all these things, how they play a role. Cause I, you know, we're coming up right on Valentine's day and I'd love for people to have that as a takeaway. It's so true. Um, so, so all of the elements that go into 
a romantic dinner, it uh, will help play, excuse me, will help play a part in how successful the evening is, right? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, that's not just planning a menu. Um, some people think they should prepare the most elaborate dish they can come up with probably a bad choice <laughs> what you you know you want you want your energy on that special person who's sitting across the table or beside you or however you prefer you know yeah. you don't want your energy worrying about is my souffle going to rise because ultimately that does not matter right. uh, <laughs> so you want to think about how can you make this evening special and memorable and maybe that's moving it to a different venue than at the dining table Maybe it's having a meal in front of a cozy fire, or uh, if the weather is cooperative, maybe you move it outdoors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, moving out, out outdoors can be a great way to shut out the other distractions, because I know for some people sitting at the dining table, um, all they're seeing, they're just seeing the dirty dishes that are in the right. kitchen, or they're, you know, they're hearing the phone ring or whatever it is. So for some people, moving outdoors is a great way to do that. Um, I know people who even try having a picnic on their bed. That's a great yeah. idea. Put it right out yeah. there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Starting out in your pajamas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's really funny. So tell us, you know, I had saved it for a little bit later, but while we're at it, mm -hmm. tell us about, I know, obviously, red wine, chocolate. We know these things are good for us. And so we, we have this interesting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, perfect, you know, uh, uh, togetherness of love and food and sex and giving chocolates and a bottle of wine and flowers is just so, um, uh, uh, you know, it's so traditional for Valentine's Day, but let's talk about wine and chocolate and what it does. And okay. even if you can't have wine, there's other things to have also, but, but sure. talk to us about the properties of, of those romantic foods. Sure. So chocolate, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, dark chocolate makes my list of the 10 best foods for women's sexual health. Um, and that is because dark chocolate is loaded with antioxidants. It can support heart health, but the theobromine and chocolate also, um, can elevate, it can increase energy a little bit like caffeine, but not, you know, you usually don't get that, that same jittery effect as, as caffeine has, uh, most of us anyway. Yeah. And so you can kind of get a little extra energy at a time when you need it, because like, if you're planning romance, um, after a long day of work that can, you know, you might just be tired. You might just yeah, plain sure. be tired. Mm -hmm. And so the chocolate can help in, um, a more subtle and gentle way often than, than a cup of coffee would. So that can be another, that's another reason that it's great. And there's also some research that chocolate potentially improves mood. It's kind of, it's kind of shaky. You know, I don't know if you've read some of the studies. It's oh, like, yes. Well, yeah. You're trying, yeah. you're trying a yeah. little hard here. Yeah. Um, or you haven't necessarily proved it. But what it probably is, is that chocolate is simply, it is a sensual food. It involves more than, it's not just a flavor, right? It's right. the aroma of chocolate. It's the way that it melts on your tongue. It It's a sensory pleasure. It's a very pleasurable food. And it could just be that that pleasure helps spark a good mood. Right, right. So, you know, so chocolate is a really great choice. And particularly, it makes my list for women, you know, for, for reasons that, that it, it supports women's sexual health, that, uh, that it can actually help uh, balance the pH of a woman's vagina, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. So, no. yeah, so it's a great food. It's great food for everyone. It's a great food for women. But of course, I have to mention, we are talking about dark chocolate. The yes. darker, the better. Um, because, of course, milk chocolate, you know, the, you want to have more cacao in there. It's yes. the cow that has all these wonderful properties. So... Yeah. So I always go for the, um, uh, and, you know, FYI, PSA for everyone, you can get the 75% and even there's an 85% mm -hmm. at Trader Joe's now. Mm -hmm. And um, it really satisfies that conundrum we have of wanting to have chocolate in our lives because it's good for us, but not so much sugar. And right. we all grew up on the classic, um, and I happen to still love Hers Hershey's Kisses. I can't mm -hmm. walk past a bowl of Hershey's Kisses <laughs> without having one. Um, but, you know, these really refined chocolates, now it's become quite the science where people are studying it. So you can get it everywhere. So that's that's the plug. Um, how about strawberries? That's another big um, Valentine's Day food. 
It is. And that actually is also on my list of the best foods for women. And it's simply, you know, the nutrition in strawberries. First of all, strawberries um, for the being such a low calorie food have a lot of nutrition, uh -huh. which is wonderful for all of us. And then something that always makes people laugh. Um, I tout any food that's a good source of fiber. Mm hmm as being great for your sex life, yes, which yes. makes people laugh, but it's really true. Okay. You don't want to feel bloated. You need everything moving yeah. in the right way in order to enjoy a healthy sex life. So strawberries, actually, that's one of their great qualities. And also they're hydrating, which is another yeah. great quality. That's just so simple. Drink lots of water, eat hydrating foods. It's going to help your sex life. I find full disclosure, I find watermelon an aphrodisiac. I mm. love watermelon. Everything about it, the you know, it's messy and that's yes. part of the fun. Yes. And um, it's so hydrating and so filled with, uh, like you say, fiber, water. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those foods. And we live in a world now where you can get these foods year round. So that's, that's another true. one of my recommendations. Is That's funny. Well watermelon. Is, mm -hmm. Watermelon makes my list of the best foods for men. Um, and that's not to say it isn't great for women for the reasons you mentioned. It also has several nutrients that are good for your sexual health, whether you're male or female. Mm -hmm. But watermelon has something called citrulline, which is a phytonutrient that they have found is great for supporting men's sexual health. It's oh, great okay. for um, blood vessel dilation and men's sexual performance. I mean, obviously, it helps women in the same way, but it has a more profound effect for men. So yes, watermelon is great for everyone, but men definitely think about eating more watermelon. And if you swallow the seed, you won't grow watermelons in your stomach. <laughs> Remember that? No? I haven't yet. <laughs> yeah. You have to spit the seeds out. Everyone said, but it's a little more fiber. If it ends up in your system, it's a little more fiber for you as well. Actually, um, I once tried, there was a company that was roasting them and selling them, pack, roasting pack and packaging them. And they were quite delicious. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a watermelon jerky now and all these watermelon. Oh, fun. Um, I have not seen Watermelon as a, as a little bit of a meat substitute. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, things about it that, that are yeah. very helpful. Now, you know, I, I saw on your website, um, Amy's website's amazing, www.eatsomethingsexy.com. And again, we'll repeat that later. Uh, amazing resource for all of this information. Um, tell us a little bit about, you've alluded to it earlier, you know, the difference between men and women, um, mm -hmm. their response to food. And I know it's not so black and white that men benefit from this. Everybody benefits from eating healthy, but right. there's some specific, yeah. You had the 10 yeah, absolutely. Foods for men and the 10 best foods for women. Yeah. Right. So on eatsomethingsexy.com, I do have, I created a list um, in collaboration with a nutritionist who, interestingly, she started out, she was at Le Cordon Bleu and she came to me and said, can I do an internship with you? And I said, sure. And she went on, she really loved the whole topic of eating for sexual health and went on to get her PhD in nutrition. Wow. wow. So we still work together and she worked with me to create these lists of the 10 best foods for men and for women. And it was really focusing on those nutrients that women particularly need for sexual health. As you know, our, our sexual hormones are different as well as just in general, our body composition is different. I mean, everyone knows women and men need different calories. They need different amounts of protein. And it's the same, of course, for eating for your sexual health. We have different hormones, we need different nutrients to support those hormones. And so it is about, you know, it is about all of that. The foods you'll notice on the men's list, there are some protein rich foods versus the women's list, which um, are more focused on getting, you know, those important nutrients that women need. I also would like to share um, with you and, and the audience that this includes blueberries and raspberries and salads and and chicken and fish and you know vary your diet like I I know and I just want it like everything's good for you when you're eating a wide variety and getting all these nutrients you know we hone right. in on the Valentines but it's stuff you can eat all year also so don't just save it for that one day because an accumulation of good nutrition is what's really beneficial. Right. It's not yes. just focusing in on Valentine's Day or birthdays or holidays 
when you know that you're going to go away for a romantic weekend or the kids are out of the house, whatever it might be, you know, this is something to take on year round. You know, that's my little, you know, yes. letting people know that, that, um, make it a habit, make it a, a daily, if not weekly habit of trying to incorporate more of these things into your diet as you go. Yeah. And I mean, those lists, we created them for that reason. We wanted an added glance. Well, what should I be eating? And it's a year round thing, because obviously if you look at that list and you make a Valentine's day dinner of for men, you know, salmon and pomegranates because they're great for men or, or peanut butter and chocolate because they make the list for women. It's not necessarily going to do anything for you in that one day, but these are foods that you can try to eat more of every day. Um, and it's funny, we also have something we call the 10 steps to sexy diet, which oh, okay. is like all the things, you know, think more because it burns calories and makes you a more creative lover or those kind of things. But it's also one of the steps is eat a vegetable rainbow. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, vary that diet, eat more of all the things. And another step is add more spices to your diets, literally spice up your life. Um, because, you know, they can add, they are these colorful spices, they add interest to your food, they add color, they add complexity of flavor. Um, you can reduce the amount of salt you add to your food when you're adding more flavor from spices. So yeah, these are all things that you can do all year round to just simply make yourself more sexy. Now, you know, what's interesting also about um, sexual health and food is that um, what about, uh, I know you're not a doctor, it's okay, but it's just kind of yeah. like a generalized, um, yeah. when people are on certain medications, you mm -hmm. know, there's, there's problems with that. Or, uh, when people are, oh, yeah. um, like you say, digestive disorders are, you know, a big yeah. thing. Um, you know, what do you recommend getting around that? Like what, what is some of the things that, you know, you can do if, uh, let's say you can have wine. Okay, let's right. talk about that because red wine falls in that same category of having um, fantastic, fantastic healing properties. Yes, it but does. Not every, but then we have this conundrum of the American Heart Association says drink wine every day for your heart health and the American Cancer Society says, you know, it's also a neurotoxin, so don't have too much. So what are some other beverages right. you can recommend um, on a sexy Valentine's Day dinner? Um, you know, there are, what's interesting is, is right now, non out there are non-alcoholic options are really having a moment. Mm -hmm. There are, um, drinks that are kind of replicating the weight and texture of wine. I don't really like the wine, the zero alcohol wines. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. think they taste like wine with something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, the way to describe it. Yeah. But, but there are options that, sh that don't try to be wine, but have, like something that has kind of that same texture and that same weight. Um, you can make a spritzer with sparkling water. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a big juice person, but you know, if you take sparkling, take a seltzer or sparkling water and add a splash of juice for color and a little flavor, that's a great option as well. Or just with cranberry little, juice, right? That'd be perfect. Cranberry juice or pomegranate, pomegranate juice, right? Yeah. What yeah. I always yeah. recommend. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pink and it's yeah. pretty and it's yes. festive. Yes. These are all great things. Or just add a little citrus even to your water if you want something even simpler. That is always um that's always a great choice. And citrus is on the list of best foods for women. So then you're checking off a box as well. And how about the hard liquor choices? What are some drinks mm -hmm. that you recommend? I know you have a lot of expertise, if I recall, yeah. in, in yes. alcoholic beverages. Yeah. I don't mean that she drinks a lot. I mean, she's really studied it. She studied it for a long it's, time. So yeah. It sounded suspect. Yes. But yes, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I have I have studied it for a long time. And that's really up to you. I find as I'm getting older, I drink less of them. Um, they make me a little tired, to be quite honest. However, yes. We have some fantastic cocktail recipes on eatsomethingsexy.com. So if you're looking for one, um, you know, that's a great place to go. My other suggestion is if you want a cocktail, but you don't want something that makes you sleepy, try like a champagne cocktail that maybe just has either something like a splash of Chambord in it. So it's just a tiny amount or something where I, I do like to do a cocktail where I just put a drop of rose water into a oh, glass of champagne. Yes. Yeah, that's a great yes. uh, tip. And now don't do that with like a fine champagne. Don't do this with a great vintage bottle of champagne. Do it with a nice bottle of cava. Yeah. Um, because it will, you know, it will change the flavor and you won't be able to appreciate like a great wine, but it makes a delicious cocktail. 
You know, circling back to chocolate, what about the chocolate specialty drinks? What are some of those that mm. you recommend could be? Um, I know there's there's hot cocoa, obviously, but I know there's yeah. some cho- chocolate liqueurs and things that could also be a nice little treat on Valentine's Day. There definitely are. I'm like, I'm just not like a s- real sweet drink person. I have okay. to admit. So mm-hmm. I'm not, I I mean, like even Godiva makes a liqueur that, that people, I, so people tell me, I get a lot of testimonials yeah. that yeah. I probably mm-hmm. don't want to hear. And that's one where people say that one really works for them. <laughs> um, I've heard that multiple times and there are others. Um, there are actually slightly more sophisticated ones. So any of those, like a chocolate liqueur, if that is something just keep in mind that there's a lot of sugar and yes. so maybe use it instead of dessert right okay that's yeah. really good mm-hmm. um yeah I, and it you know people associate it with winter also chocolate mm-hmm. um, chocolate drinks tend to be more warm and more uh not nice. necessarily a summer drink so just I think the bottom line here is just enjoy even if you like a little chocolate milk with some ice in it go for yes. it get your little bit of chocolate in there um Amy, your your website and your work is just it's it's such a fabulous resource for this information. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your business and what is it you're doing? And I want to oh, hear about the books. Thanks. Yeah, tell us. I about yeah, I'd love yeah. to. And actually, I have an exciting. I have a new one, so that I'm really excited about. So I this is what I do. I speak and write and talk on aphrodisiac foods. Um, I have created eatsomethingsexy.com as a resource for everyone. So you can find information on foods for sexual health. You can learn about the history of aphrodisiacs, get recipes. I have a number of writers who work with me who are expert lifestyle experts. So there's even like where to go on, you know, where's a great place for a romantic vacation? Um, What are some great products? All of these things, it's all there. And then, as you mentioned, I am the author. I'm actually the author of five aphrodisiac cookbooks. I think four of them are still in publication. Yeah. Okay. I (laughs) shortchanged you there. I've been at this a while, but you did mention the newest one is called Eat Cake Naked, which is an all dessert book that I co-wrote with um, the nutritionist I mentioned before, Delana. We, it's, it's an ebook, which was a new thing for me. It's an ebook only. Mm -hmm. Um, you can get it from any of the major ebook retailers and it's all desserts that have something that kind of is good for your sexual health. Okay. That's but great. they're still delicious. They're so good. And then my latest thing, it's called the better sex bundle for men. It's not, it's not just a book. It's, it's a whole package. It's a suite of, of printables that you can use with this book. And so it's a book on just eating for men's sexual health. It's based around those 10 best foods for men. And then I give a sample three-day menu so you can get the idea of what it would look like if you were incorporating these foods. Because it's, I want to show you, you can still eat normal, delicious meals, right? Um, there's a planner so you can plan your own meals and kind of check off the boxes. Did I eat any watermelon this week? Yes, yes, I did. You know, th- all of that. And then there's a journal, which is not a like write down your feelings kind of journal. It's a Uh very simple, basic, just to kind of help you make your observations. Like, did you exercise today? Did you start a new medication? Like what is helping? What is hurting your sexual health? And you so that you can evaluate that for yourself. Um, It's really amazing because all these, yeah, these single men out there don't know what to do is like, and, and you could do it as a partnership if, if he can do the cooking, but he wants this in his life, his partner can help him, um, you know, whether it's same sex, heterosexual Mm -hmm. sex. I mean, everybody can participate in that. That's fantastic. Yes. My sort of my, my selling line is if you are a man or your partner is a man, yeah, yeah, you can benefit (laughs) from this, from this, from this product, from this book. Um, and absolutely. And I do in there talk about how doing these things can also help increase intimacy and, you know, up that romance quotient in your life as well. You know, Amy, something that's seldomly talked about, I talk about it a lot because I do all this stuff with aging. No matter what you weigh, no matter how old you are, no matter what you look like, you can have an incredibly fulfilling sex life. Yeah, totally. I tell everybody that. Yes. We spend too much time in our society comparing ourselves to what other people will, you know, look like or are doing. You are beautiful just the way you are. 
Uh, lingerie comes in all shapes and sizes. People come in all shapes and sizes. And, you know, it's a big wide world out there. So I say enjoy, explore, you know, go after it. Um, you deserve it. Each and every person deserves, you know, this kind of happiness in their lives. Yes. A little or a lot that you're doing. It's I agree a hundred percent. And it's, you know, and it's also, it's easy. That's the other part of it is people think either they don't deserve it or they can't have it or it's too hard, but it's easy. It's affordable. It's, you know, it's so attainable to, to eat these foods and buy some cute lingerie and feel good about yourself. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Eat that box of chocolate together in front of a fire in the backyard. Right. 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 There you go. There you go. And for those of you who are in apartments, uh, I like the idea of having a picnic in bed. I think that's fantastic. Um, Amy, this has just been amazing. Um, I want to ask you, what do you like about getting older? Ooh, um, I'm wiser. <laughs> Definitely. Every every year I get, I, I don't necessarily get smarter, but I get, I, I attain and retain more knowledge and I love it. Yeah. How old are your kids now? Oh my goodness. So I'm still in the thick of it. I have an eight-year-old and, ele- and an 11-year-old. Oh, so how do you get time away? What do you want to do? Yeah. (laughs) That is, I mean, that is our struggle right now. Yeah. Where Mm -hmm. do you find that? And so those moments that we do find are very important. Um, We go after the kids get dropped off at school, we go for a walk and have coffee once a week. Oh, that's fantastic. That's our little moment. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Again, Amy, thank you so much. And for more information and to reach out to Amy Riley, go to eatsomethingsexy.com. Take a look at these new books she has going out. And I wish you the best with all the projects and wonderful things. And happy, happy Valentine's Day to you and your husband and to everybody out there. Oh my goodness. Happy Valentine's Day to you and everyone else as well. Yes, I I hope everyone has a memorable Memorable Valentine's Day, but remember every day can be Valentine's Day. Absolutely. And I want to thank you all for listening and please subscribe to my channel for more engaging discussions on all things aging well. For feedback or show topic discussions, please contact me at www.patriciagreenberg.com. And again, Amy, thank you and have a lovely 2024. Thank you.